Arkadaşlar merhaba. Ben İngilizce öğretmeni Pınar Sunal Kuruz. Melatünügür Ortaokulu YouTube kanalına hoş geldiniz. Bugün sizlere 8. sınıf 10. ünitede yer alan doğal afetleri ve bu doğal afetlerle ilintili kelimeleri öğretirken kelimeleri daha akılda kalıcı kılmak için YouTube videolarıyla desteklenmiş bir preze sunusu hazırladım. Hadi başlayalım. Natural Forces The first natural force is a hurricane. Let's watch a video and learn what it is. When the maximum sustained winds or a tropical storm reach 74 miles per hour, it is called a hurricane. Hurricane season begins on June the 1st and ends on November the 30th. But these powerful storms can occur before and after the official season. A hurricane can be a and is the factor force of nature. Okay, now let's learn another natural force, tsunami. <laughs> what is a tsunami? Huh? I don't know. Tsunami is a series of giant waves. <laughs> In Japanese, tsunami means harbor wave. And in Chinese? <laughs> oh, just listen. A wave is created when energy passes through water. Moving air or wind provides energy to water, forming regular waves. Hmm. Oh. While on the ocean floor, when a tectonic plate suddenly slides beneath the other, the resulting earthquake releases a tremendous amount of energy. This energy spreads outward from the point of earthquake, triggering waves that can form tsunami. Initially, these waves are small in size, but they travel at great speeds. Oh. However, when the waves approach the shore, the rising seabed <laughs> obstructs the energy of waves. This slows down the speed of waves, but the energy flux must remain constant, leading to an increase in the height of waves, thus resulting in tsunami. <laughs> it's time to learn another natural force. Let's look what it is. Okay, it is tornado. Let's watch it. Ahoy! Let's think. Today we answer the question, what is a tornado? Tornadoes are some of the most scariest weather phenomena out there, and they cause a lot of damage in their most extreme forms. A tornado is essentially a column of air, which rotates very fast. It touches the ground, but also the base of the clouds, creating effects like whirlwinds or twisters. In some cases, tornadoes can achieve high-speed winds, even more 300 miles per hour, which is so much more than even the fastest cars racing at full speed. Some of the most extreme tornadoes have the power to destroy a building and even affect large skyscrapers with substantial and costly damage. Some experts claim that we're seeing more tornadoes because of climate change. The surface temperature of the sea is increasing and the moisture in the atmosphere is becoming much higher. For this reason, the cool season can be affected by more tornadoes and other forms of extreme weather conditions that might be potentially dangerous. Ever since the 1950s, there has been a conscious effort into trying to spot tornadoes in advance, to warn people so that they can get to safety. Today, we have advanced weather radars, which make the task a lot easier. So, if you know a tornado is coming, you should take shelter in a basement if possible. If you don't have a basement, you should protect yourself by going under a heavy table or desk. The most important thing is to stay away from windows, outside walls and doors. Also, as cool looking as they may be, do not go chasing tornadoes, as they are unpredictable and can change source abruptly. So, that answers the question, what is a tornado? That took some thinking. The fourth natural force in our unit is an earthquake. Let's learn it by watching a video of an earthquake. When the earth shakes, the ground moves and things start to fall, you'll ask yourself, how prepared or unprepared are you? Have you removed objects from over the bed and over your head? Anchored your possessions securely to the wall. It won't be a pain. 
and you're not doing it in vain. Are your emergency kits packed? What about your family, your friends? Do they know what to do, how to get in touch, and where to meet? Do you know how to drop, cover, and hold on, covering your head and neck? What if you're outside? Or in a car? After the shaking stops, look around. Figure out what to do. Stay away from damaged areas. Turn on a radio. Reach out for help. And if you're trapped, do not move about. Stay calm. Only shout as a last resort. Once everything and everyone is safe, get prepared. An aftershock could be on its way. So before the earth shakes, the ground moves, and things start to fall, get prepared. Make a plan. Practice what you know, because an earthquake can happen anytime, anywhere. You never know. Okay, now it's time to watch a video of Volcano. Let's start. Ahoy! Let's think. Today we answer the question, how do volcanoes erupt? To understand how a volcano erupts, we'll first need to take a look at the structure of the Earth. Earth has different layers, which include the inner and outer core, the mantle and the crust. We'll focus on the mantle and crust, as this is where all volcanic action takes place. The crust is the outermost layer, as well as the thinnest layer on Earth. Right below the crust is the mantle, where temperatures can reach up to 1000 degrees Celsius. Due to the high temperatures and the increasing pressure in the mantle, rocks can melt to form molten rock or magma. Magma has less density than the rock surrounding it, and materials with less density will usually float or rise above higher density items. The magma will try to float to the top and seek out cracks and spaces to go into, which can form magma chambers. With the right conditions, such as extreme pressure, changing heat, and tectonic activity, the magma can rise through the magma chamber and erupt through the Earth's crust, causing a volcanic explosion. The magma we see flowing on the surface is lava, and as the lava cools, it forms a volcano. Just like there are different sizes and shapes of volcanoes, there is also different types of volcanic eruptions, such as Hawaiian eruptions, which occur when lava shoots into the air in jets through a vent. The jets can last for as long as days and is known as fire fountaining. Probably the most dangerous eruption is the Plinian eruption, which is the largest and most violent. This eruption releases an incredible amount of energy and can cause an eruption of gas and ash that can reach up to 50 kilometers or 35 miles high. The most well-known Plinian eruption is that of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. Regardless of the type of eruption, it's best to be as far away from one as you possibly can. So that answers, how do volcanoes erupt? That took some thinking. Okay, let's see what an avalanche is with the help of a very short video of it. Pardon. Another natural force is the rough. Have you ever thought what will happen if it does not rain for a very long period? When it does not rain for a very long period, then the soil continuously loses water by evaporation and transpiration. The level of water in ponds and wells goes down and some water bodies dry up. The groundwater also depletes. Prolonged periods of deficient water supply cause drought. What if it rains too much? Let's see. Floods can form after heavy rain over a long period or when a large snowfall melts. 
there are many different types of flooding which fall under three main categories. The first results from overflow. After heavy rain, a river can burst its banks. The water can engulf entire valleys far from the precipitation zone. Other tributaries add to the flow of water, worsening the deluge further downstream. The second type of flooding involves the accumulation of water in lowlands or basins. In normal weather conditions, water is absorbed into the ground and merges with the water table. When the ground is saturated, water builds up in low-lying areas. Runoff then quickly fills the valley and its waterways. The third type is caused by urbanization in flood-prone areas. Excess water passing through drainage systems can accumulate in low-lying zones. This effect is worsened by the coverage of land with buildings and impermeable surfaces such as concrete. Less water can be absorbed into the ground, overloading sewers. And the last natural force to learn is landslide. What is landsliding? Let's learn it. A landslide is the moment rock, earth, or debris melts oh, into the land. Oh, and Sevgili öğrenciler, ben bu sunuyu hazırlarken www.youtube.com.tr sitesinde yer alan videolardan eğitim amacıyla faydalandım. Umarım sizler için de faydalı olmuştur. Bir başka derste görüşmek üzere. Hoşça kalın ve lütfen sağlıkla kalın.